Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel, Hi Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting, tricky algebra question, 1 to the x equal to 8. And a lot of students might be thinking that this is not possible, because when we apply natural log on both sides, so let's do this right now. So we're going to apply natural log on both sides. As a result, we have natural log of 1 to the x on the left side, equal to natural log of natural log of 8. And of course, according to a log property, this x will come down right here. So as a result, we have x times natural log 1 equal to natural log 8. And the last move, we're going to divide both sides by this natural log 1 from here. So we're going to divide both sides by natural log 1. And when we divide it, we have our x on the left side. So we have our x equal to natural log 8 over natural log 1. And of course, natural log 8 is a great constant for us, but natural log 1 is equal to is equal to 0. And of course, in terms of basic math, in terms of school algebra, we can't divide by 0. So as a result, we can easily say that right here we have no no real no real roots but of course when we don't have real roots maybe we have a uh, complex roots okay so right now we can easily reject our part we don't have right here real number roots okay we can easily reject it and right now let's learn a little bit i'm going to show you a few thoughts about about my approach how can we find right here a complex a complex root so let me just split this part and first of all let's remember let's learn about Euler's identity this identity uh, looks like that we have e to the power i times theta equal to cosine theta cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is our Euler's identity. We can easily check, for example, when theta equal to zero. Let's see what will happen. So for theta is equal to zero, we're going to have like e to the power i times zero equal to cosine zero plus i times sine zero. On the left side, we have one because e to the power zero equal to one, cosine zero equal to one and sine zero equal to equal to zero. So as a result, we have one equal to one. So Euler's identity Euler's identity is great. But right now I'm going to show you how can we solve our question because don't forget about that we need to find, we need to solve 1 to the x equal to 8. First of all, I'm going to show you a really interesting uh, substitution. This substitution looks like that. So let, it's a, a, a great substitution for us, theta equal to 2k pi. This is our substitution. And of course, we can consider k as integer. So we are talking about k equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and you know, a lot of these integers. And right now, instead of this theta, let's plug in this 2k pi. Let's see what will happen. So our identity looks a little bit different from, from the beginning. Okay, so as a result, we're going to have e to the power i times 2k pi. Instead of theta, we plug in uh, 2k pi equal to cosine 2k pi, okay, cosine 2k pi, and plus i sine 2k pi. Okay, this is after our substitution, theta equal to uh, theta equal to 2k pi. And right now, let's see what will happen when, for example, k is equal to a 1. Let's see what will happen. Okay, so k, so for k equal to equal to 1. What do we have as a result? So instead of k, we're going to plug in right here um, our 1. Okay, so as a result, we have e to the power i times 2 pi, e to the power i times 2 pi equal to cosine 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. But we can easily find cosine 2 pi and sine 2 pi, okay? Cosine 2 pi, this is our um, 1, okay? Right here we have 1. And sine 2 pi is, is 0. So as a result, we have 1 plus i times 0, so 1 plus 0. So as a result, this expression on the left side equal to 1, okay? Really great. Just keep in mind this Mm, one. Let's see what will happen when k is equal to for k is equal to two. Let's see what will happen. As a result, we have e to the power i times four pi. Okay, when k is equal to two, equal to cosine four pi, cosine four pi, and plus i times sine four times sine 4 pi. And if you look closely, cosine 4 pi, this is like the same thing as cosine 2 pi because of a period, okay? We're talking about the same one, and right here we are talking about the same zero. So as a result, we have 1 plus 0 equal to 1. So as you can see, we have the same one on the on the right side. And let's check once, once more. For example, uh, let's k equal to 3, okay? So 4k, 4k equal to 3. As a result, what do we have? We have right here, we have e to the power i times 6 pi equal to cosine 6 pi, 6 pi, and plus i sine 6 pi. 
And if you look closely, we have absolutely the same principle. We have cosine 4 pi, this is the same as cosine 6 pi, as cosine 2 pi, because of a period. So as a result, we have the same 1, and right here we have the same 0. So as a result, 1 plus 0 equal to equal to 1. So our expression is equal to 1 as well. And uh, I, I really hope you understand the fact that when k is equal to 4, so for k is equal to 4, we're going to have like uh, 8 pi, and right here 8 pi, so we have the same 1, and uh, when k equal to 5, we have 10 pi, and of course we are talking about integers, and doesn't matter, because we have all the time even even value, which, which tells us that right here we just go for a period, and this cosine is all the time 1, this sign is all all the time zero so as all the is as you can see all the time on the right side we have one so this expression right here right here right here equal to one all the time but we are talking about general expression so our general expression is right here so e to the power i times 2k pi equal to one so let's write mm, how, how does our expression looks like after after my thoughts about this uh, challenge so our e to the power i times 2k pi so after all of this we can write that e to the power i times 2k pi all the time equal to 1 we proved it all the time equal to 1 but of course we need to mention that k is uh, is integer so k we're talking about integers we're talking about 1 2 3 you know when k is integer all the time this expression is equal to is equal to 1 so i really hope you understand it right now let's remember how does our um, expression looks like we in the beginning we had uh, 1 to the x equal to equal to 8 and right now really important moment of course we know that right here we don't have real number roots but when we change this one right here by this e to the power i times 2k pi we can easily do that because this expression is equal to 1 we can easily say that we can find complex root because we have imaginary unit right here so it's it's a great substitution for us so instead of this one we're gonna plug in uh, uh, e to the power i times 2k pi so let's do this right now so we have e to the power i times 2k pi raised to the power x don't forget about it raised to the power x equal to equal to one okay really great for now let's simplify it of course we can multiply our powers by this x so we have e to the power i times 2k pi times x is equal to is equal to 1. Right now how can we find our x with the basic method? Let's apply mm, natural log on both sides. So as a result we have natural log of this expression of e to the power i times 2k pi uh, x and of course natural log of our expression on the left side 1. Right here actually we don't need parentheses but of course with parentheses it doesn't matter right here we can easily write this uh, power in front of this natural log because of uh, natural log and natural log property so we have i times 2k pi x times natural log e natural log natural log e and equal to natural log natural log 1. Okay this is our this our expression how does our expression looks like and of course right here we have eight so it looks like a real a little bit uh, we need to mention that right here we have eight not one but doesn't matter it works with the with every constant on the right side so we have right here nature log of and uh, nature log of eight and our final tricky move let's divide both side by i times 2k pi and as a result we have only our x so with the result we have x equal to natural log, uh, natural log of 8 on the right side and on in our denominator we will have i times 2k pi okay i times 2k pi and of course if you're interested in a, in a like in multiplication by i you, you're gonna get i square in our denominator and in our numerator we have i natural log 8 and with the minus sign, of course, because i times i equal to i square. So as a result, we have the negative sign in the beginning. And of course, dividing by 2k pi. And we need to mention that k is integer. So we need to mention this really important line. So but k is, we're talking about, k we're talking about integer. So when k is integer, this is our answer to our question. Of course, in terms of complex numbers, uh, because we don't have uh, real numbers, uh, we don't have real number roots, we proved it in the beginning, so we have it right here, no real roots, but according to this, according to that method, we can find real quick our one one complex root. So let's write our final answer to this question. Let's write it, for example, right here. So our answer our answer i'm going to use this uh, of course you can use this answer or this answer i'm going to use this one with multiplication both numerator and denominator by i and my x is equal to minus i natural log 8 over 2k pi 
this is our answer and of course we need to mention that k is integer because we don't know what will happen when k in for example equal to one half this works only when k is integer so we are talking about one two three and you know a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, combinations okay one two three four but what will happen when k gonna be for example a square root of two we don't know so this is like a special case when k is integer we can easily say that this is a correct a correct answer we proved it we proved this answer uh, before okay so this is like a uh, tricky question i would say this is like a regular question from from school this is like a tricky question i agree with it i just wanted you uh, to show you this uh, approach with the with this lamp with this other's identity and of course with these like tricky manipulations right here and of course i really hope you understand it i really hope you learn something new and i really hope you enjoy it so thank you for your time wish you all the best in your life take care of yourself and write your notes what do you think about this type of question it's it's really interesting to exchange uh, to exchange information so wish you all the best in your life take care of yourself and have a great day see you in the next videos